You can take great shots with a GoPro. Unfortunately, the footage sometimes looks like this. Or like this. Or like this. And I can understand if you are frustrated, if your shots don't look like in the GoPro commercials and are partly just unusable. So today I'm going to show you the 5 most common causes for bad GoPro footage and I'll give you tips on how to improve the quality of your footage for all 5 situations. The GoPro is a great camera for travel, action and sports. However, like any other tool, it has its limitations. The sensor of a GoPro is very small and even though sensor size is not everything, the amount of light that such a sensor can capture is very limited. When you shoot with a GoPro, two factors determine the brightness of your shot, the ISO value and the shutter speed. We need to take a quick look at these two values if we want to understand the first two causes of a bad shot. The shutter speed determines the length of the exposure time. In other words, how long the light falls on the sensor. The longer this exposure time is, so the lower the shutter speed, the brighter the image will be. The ISO value on the other hand determines how sensitively the camera reacts to light. A high ISO value causes the camera to react much more sensitively to the incoming light. This makes the image brighter. This becomes especially important when you are shooting in low light conditions. However, high ISO values also have disadvantages. They lead to ugly image noise. And that brings us to our first problem. On the GoPro, a high ISO value also leads to artifacts and ugly image noise. You'll achieve optimal image quality at an ISO of 100. So I can guarantee you that most of the footage from the GoPro commercials was taken at an ISO of 100. Up to an ISO of 400, the shots still look good. At 800, you can already clearly perceive image noise and a shot with an ISO of 1600 is actually no longer usable. GoPro has managed to improve the image quality at higher ISO values in recent years. However, ISO 800 is still a clear limit for acceptable recordings. The GoPro's automatic sets the ISO value itself in the default configuration and the maximum is set to 1600. So in low light conditions, the camera might shoot with an ISO of 1600. The result will not look good. At the same time, you should be aware that low light conditions are not just shots taken in the evening or at night. By this I also mean shots indoors or in a shady forest for example. This is already enough to cause the ISO value of your GoPro to go up. For this reason, I generally recommend setting the maximum ISO value to 400 for good image quality. Unfortunately, this doesn't solve all the problems. Because if there is not enough light and the ISO value is limited, the automatic of the camera will try to increase the exposure time. Because this is the only way to make the image brighter. And that brings us to our second problem. An exposure time that is too long. A longer exposure time, which means a lower shutter speed, leads not only to a brighter image, but also to more motion blur. In filmmaking, there is a general rule that for optimal shot quality and perfect motion blur, the shutter speed should be exactly twice the frame rate. So if you are shooting at 30 frames per second, the shutter speed should be 1 60th of a second. This is also called the 180 degree shutter rule. Every professional will shoot this way unless they want to achieve a very special effect. Unfortunately, this rule cannot necessarily be applied to a GoPro. In addition, it could even be that the automatic of the GoPro, if the light is not sufficient, chooses an even longer exposure time. At 30 frames per second, up to 1 30th of a second would be possible. Regardless of whether it is 1 30th or 1 60th of a second, the individual frames of your shot no longer look sharp and frozen, but contain a certain amount of motion blur. Normally, this would be okay, but the great strength of a GoPro is its excellent electronic stabilization. And the hypersmooth stabilization only works well if the individual frames are sharp. Now, if the shutter speed is too long, there will be too much motion blur and the stabilization will not work properly. Your shot will look very strange, as in this example. This also applies to the otherwise optimal 180 degree shutter rule. If the shutter speed is even lower, the image will look blurred and even worse. If we look at these first two problems, we can really only conclude that the GoPro is not really made for low light conditions. And that's just the way it is. If you look at professional GoPro footage, you'll almost exclusively see footage in good daylight. And that's okay. After all, it's an action camera. If you still want to take a shot in low light, I would first recommend using a low frame rate, for example 24 frames per second. If possible, I would then use the camera on a tripod. For frequent shooting in low light, I would even recommend a gimbal. That way, you don't need the stabilization and can manually set the shutter speed to 1 48th of a second. Then I would manually set the ISO value and keep it as low as possible. By the way, you can find links to a suitable tripod or a gimbal in the video description. And if you are interested in the topic GoPro and low light, you can find a very detailed tutorial on this topic on my channel. 
The next problem has to do with the dynamic range. The GoPro generally has difficulties with situations that have a high dynamic range. This refers to shooting situations where there are very bright and very dark areas in the same image. For example, if you are in a rather dark forest, but parts of the sky are also in the frame. Or typically, if you are in a house and there is a window in the frame. In these cases, it often happens that the bright areas in the image, the sky or the window, are completely burnt out. You can no longer see any details, everything is just white or looks strange. With a GoPro, you will not succeed in exposing all areas in the image optimally. However, you could set the exposure to the highlights. And this is very easy with the help of the exposure control. To do this, tap on one of the bright areas in the image on the display. A white square appears and the exposure will change. Confirm the new exposure with the check mark. If you want to prevent the camera from correcting the exposure again when you move the camera, simply tap the white square again before confirming. Now a small lock appears and with the check mark you can fix the new exposure. However, this will make the image darker, which is not always optimal, especially if you are capturing people in the darker areas of the image. With a GoPro, you want to take detailed and high resolution shots. However, the file sizes should also be kept within limits. To achieve this goal, the recorded image data is compressed by the camera. This does not have to be a problem. Compression is a normal process in video recording. Often it will not be noticeable at all. However, there are cases where the image quality is visibly reduced by the compression. This is especially the case if your shot contains a lot of small details in the same color, like a meadow with grass or a forest with many small branches. So-called compression artifacts can occur. The video image looks partially pixelated or muddy. Often the image still looks good on your own PC, but at the latest when you upload it to YouTube, it comes to the compression artifacts mentioned. Because YouTube compresses the uploaded video files again. I found that GoPro footage as well as footage from other action cams is much more susceptible to this than footage from a mirrorless or DSLR. I did some tests and comparison shots on this topic. I was able to determine that 4K videos on YouTube suffer significantly less from this image compression. You should therefore export and upload your videos to YouTube in 4K. On the newer versions of the GoPro, you can set the bitrate to high. This way there is less compression. More data will be transferred and the files will be significantly larger. You should know, however, that in most cases you will hardly notice the improvements. Also the quality for YouTube is hardly improved. In general, you should be aware that compression artifacts will appear if you are going to shoot in a certain environment. Our last problem is also related to compression. And this time I'm referring to situations where your shot has little contrast. For example, if you want to take landscape shots on a cloudy day, especially if it's also a snowy landscape like this one. In these cases, you have the problem that possible details disappear due to the compression and you are left with a completely flat image. Many people will recommend that you take your GoPro footage with a flat color profile, that is with the flat setting under color. This will desaturate the image, it will contain less contrast and you will have more options in post. That is, if you want to use your own color grading. However, in the cases I mentioned, where your shot already has little contrast, I would strongly advise against it. Due to the flat color profile, additional details are lost, since the image is still compressed as mentioned before. As you can see here, the shot taken with a standard color profile has more detail than the shot taken with the flat color profile, even after grading. So what should you take away from this video? A GoPro takes great shots outdoors and in good lighting conditions. In low light, but also indoors in artificial light, you have to pay attention to the ISO value. Even at an ISO of 800, your shot will not look its best. Unfortunately, a lower shutter speed also leads to problems, because it prevents the electronic stabilization from doing its job. A too low shutter speed, therefore, could ruin your shot as well. The GoPro has problems with situations where there are very bright and very dark areas in the image. The bright areas could burn out. You can solve the problem with the exposure control, but you will get a darker image. Shots that contain a lot of small details can cause compression issues, especially if you upload your video to YouTube. Consider rendering and uploading your projects in 4K. A flat color profile is not suitable for shooting situations that contain little contrast. Due to the compression, you will lose more details. And that's it for today. If you found the video interesting, give me a like as feedback. There will be more GoPro tutorials, so stay tuned and see you next time.